Democrats and Republicans, two mighty party machines. They produce politicians and presidents. Are they still as well oiled as they once were? And what kind of presidential products have they produced? Given the divisions in politics in the West, is the two-party machine in need of a service? Money talks. It can't buy you love, but could it buy you a nomination? Join me, Jan Darash, for How We Got Here. President Biden's decision to not seek re-election and fully endorse his vice president, Kamala Harris, for the electoral face-off with Donald Trump has caused a political earthquake in the US. Within 41 hours, Harris's campaign raised over 100 million US dollars from 1.1 million donors, rapidly setting a new record. And we will win this election. Future Forward, an influential group supporting Biden, also announced 150 million US dollars in commitments within 24 hours of the president's announcement. Previously withheld funds due to concerns about Biden's performance began flowing in. Major donors expressed renewed enthusiasm for a fresh face and a new hope. Additionally, the Harris campaign saw a dramatic increase in volunteer sign-ups, indicating a strong and enthusiastic base ready for the upcoming election. Despite initial calls for a competitive process to replace Biden, it quickly became clear that Harris would secure the majority of delegates at the Democratic Convention. It wasn't until the 1970s that voters were given the opportunity to select presidential candidates via a primary process. The new system, however, had mixed results for the Democrats, such as George McGovern's poor performance in 1972, but also produced leaders like Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. This time, the fate of the party lies with Harris. Even though her time as VP forced her to focus more on domestic issues, she is described as Trump's antithesis when it comes to foreign policy. Vice President votes For example, unlike Trump's vice president pick J.D. Vance, Harris is a staunch supporter of providing Ukraine with continuous aid. The NATO alliance is stronger and Russia is weaker. When Kamala Harris visited Poland in March 2022, shortly after the outbreak of the war in Ukraine, the US vice president also praised the Polish government and public for helping refugees from the war-torn nation. Kamala Harris has another strong connection to Poland. Her husband, Doug Emhoff, is of Polish heritage, as his great-grandmother came from Poland. Well, it's great to welcome our guest again to the, to the programme, Jakub Graza of the Institute of New Europe. Welcome again to the programme. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Great to have you. Um, as we were talking before we came to the studio, you presented us with a very interesting fact about uh, the period from 1978 in American politics. Could you tell that to us? Uh, yes. Uh, it is this year, this election, uh, 2024 election in the US, uh, is the first uh, election uh, since 1978 that doesn't have uh, either Bush or Clinton or uh, Biden on the ticket, on either of the tickets. Uh, so the president and vice president candidates. Uh, so this is this is a bit telling about the state of uh, state of affairs in the American politics. Yes, what does it tell us? Does it tell us that they are just dominated by a small group of families or dynasties? Uh, I think that that you have put it, you you have expressed it uh, quite correctly. Uh, this is not only not only the fact that uh, American politics is dominated by uh, by the same people. It's also uh, it's also uh, the fact that American politics is dominated by uh, elderly candidates uh, after Joe Biden resigned, uh, decided not to run yes. for uh, for office for uh, for for one more time. Uh, Donald Trump is now the oldest uh, presidential candidate ever in the U.S. history. Uh, so this is the, the, this is quite concerning to to uh, to observers. Uh, and not only to the American people as well, because uh, according to polls, American people uh, are of the opinion that uh, both Joe Biden and Donald Trump are too old to, to run for, uh, for re-election. But anyway, uh, 
uh, anyway they may have uh, until last week they uh, it it seemed that they would have had no choice but uh, but now they they will probably have a choice between an older candidate and a you know, not so old uh, candidate. yes but what does this uh, tell us about the state of America is it is it this idea that there's no fresh blood going through the party machines or or outsiders have a chance for example Kamala Harris uh, not, not not a part of these um, uh, established dynasties George Clooney for example um, would be my my bet but uh, from the, on the Republican side Donald Trump former president widely seen as an outsider to the Republicans how do, does this represent a failure of the system to produce these uh, establish, establishment figures? Uh, I would say that this uh, it requires a lot of time and a lot of work, a lot of effort over the longer course of, uh, of uh, time to, uh, to garner uh, support to, uh, to, uh, to go up the ranks of the party and to uh, to uh, also win uh, certain kind of authority, certain kind of respect uh, in 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 a political community. Uh, so when you look at not only the presidential candidates but but also the leaders of the parties in in Congress, uh, now the leader of the party in the House of Representatives is. Uh, the leader of the Democratic Party is Hakim Jeffries. He's quite young, but before him, there was Nancy Pelosi. Uh, for uh, for uh, for, uh, for, uh, let, uh, for in the Senate, there was there's still Mitch McConnell. There's still Chuck Schumer. Uh, so it's a it's a broader problem in the American politics that it takes a lot of time to uh, to you know go up. Uh, up uh, the ranks and to 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 uh, you know we, we, to 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 reach uh, the status uh, that allows you to to run for such an office as uh, as a president. Yeah. And, uh, and you'd say that this is a, uh, a historical feature of the uh, parli the uh, parliamentary no sorry the party system that you have to do your app apprenticeship and get a certain. Um, Level of experience first. You can't. You can't just be a young upstart mm -hmm. and and come in and storm the elections. Mm. Uh, I think this may be this may be a um, a more general. Uh, it's a very general question, honestly. Uh, so, of course, in I think in every system, in every political system, it requires a lot of time to uh, to. Uh, you know, build your career, build your career, and garner support, support to to make people coalesce around you. Uh, but in in the current uh, in the uh, nowadays, it it has it it has gone to to, to an extreme in the American politics. So uh, we could see in the past, of course, uh, older candidates such as Ronald Reagan. Uh, was uh, was quite old, and he was still uh, elected after after the famed debate when he was uh, when he was challenged. Uh, yes, the great joke about yes, his, the, yes. the, the lack of experience of his yes, opponent. Yes, yes, definitely. So so we we had to we uh, we could we could uh, observe uh, elderly more elderly candidates in the past as well, but. Uh, I think it has gone to a certain uh, to, to an extreme in the American politics nowadays. So th there is definitely something that uh, that uh, both parties have to have to uh, think about and, and reconsider to to uh, to uh, let younger politicians, uh, you know, such as uh, John F. Kennedy, for example. Yes, yes, let them in. Yes, <laughs> I would say it's a very fine line to tread, isn't it? You are either too old. But you, you too old, in, uh, or you're too young, and there's an, there seems to be an optimal optimal zone that you're the right age. You've you've got the, you've got the the experience, the uh, the energy, the uh, the mental faculties, and you're and you've hit this 50s, 60s kind of peak peak time. 
Mm, yeah, definitely. This this may be frustrating. Yeah, for sure. That after you have reached this the, this peak time, uh, I would say it it may be extended up to uh, 60s or early 60s. Uh, but uh, of course, it, to a certain degree, it it's. It, uh, uh, it is up to a, a certain person personality because some, some people are uh, Donald Trump is four years younger than uh, than Joe Biden still he has a lot of uh, way more energy than Joe yes. Biden he has way more energy than Joe Biden had four years ago and still Joe Biden was elected four years ago uh, so, yeah. um, let, let's move now on to the uh, the current uh, nominee uh, Kamala Harris uh, She's um, at a record-breaking pace. She's uh, achieved a huge amount of money, uh, pledges for her campaign. Uh, is it possible to buy a nomination, uh, like a buying a uh, buying a hand in poker? Mm -hmm. That's a very good. Que uh, that's a very good question. Uh, that's a question that uh, that observers and and experts and analysts and politicians as well have been asking themselves for quite a long time in the American politics. Uh, I would say if I were to answer directly to that question, no, it is impossible to buy, uh, buy uh, the election in, in, in an outright way. But uh, a candidate who has a, uh, a huge, a significant uh, Edge in terms of uh, in terms of uh, financing over uh, another candidate, uh, over the opposing candidate, uh, his or her chances of, of winning either the nomination or or the presidency or um, any other office rise dramatically. This is this is uh, this is something that is I would say quite quite obvious. In this case, Kamala Harris, uh, Kamala Harris uh, got. Uh, 50 billion dollars over uh, over uh, merely uh, I would say dozen hours after after uh, Joe Biden announced that he would not be seeking re-election re uh, so uh, Joe Biden announced uh, that he would not be seeking re-election uh, on Sunday uh, and at the time uh, observers, analysts were asking themselves a question if the party, the Democratic Party, would be able to unite among Kamala Harris within the next, I, I, I can tell you exactly, but 8, 10, 12 hours maybe, Kamala Harris uh, uh, garnered at least $50, billion, uh, $50 million in, yes. in uh, grassroots, uh, grassroots uh, uh, payments from, uh, from donors. Uh, so, so that is that is quite impressive. And yes, the, uh, the figure we have is yes. it has 100 million over 24 hours. Yes, uh, yes. an amazing. Uh, yes, achievement. that's amazing. And uh, I would point to the fact that before Joe Biden uh, announced that he would not be seeking re-election, uh, Donald Trump was uh, was winning uh, with Joe against Joe Biden in terms of uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, in terms of payments from donor, donors, uh, he had uh, he had he was uh, he was winning an edge uh, against Joe Biden, and now Kamala Harris is is uh, bouncing back after uh, after Joe Biden. Uh, we, you, you mentioned at the at the, uh, the start of our discussion about this domination of certain dynasties, or almost like a. They said that the U.S. is a, has a an elective monarchy, and you know, it's a very um, uh, family-dominated uh, organization. Within these two uh, uh, parties, I suppose we'll concentrate on the Democratic one, what, what are the factions that Kamala Harris has to pacify, has to seduce or woo in her bid to get the nomination? We, we see a party as one party, but is it, is it, is it a loose coalition of different groups, different interest groups? How do you see it? Uh, so the first faction that uh, supported Kamala Harris after, uh, after Joe Biden endorsed her uh, for, for uh, presidency uh, was the, the left wing, the progressive uh, faction. Uh, it's called CPC, uh, Congressional Progressive Caucus. Uh, it was quite. It was almost a foregone conclusion that this this uh, 
this uh, faction would be, uh, if not the first one to, to support Kamala Harris, it would be, it would support uh, sooner or later. Uh, for now, it seems that the Democratic Party is close to to uh, to some sort of unity on uh, on the endorsement of Kamala Harris. So. Uh, I don't think that the question of whether Kamala Harris can can lose a sub, uh, support or not win, not be able to win support of a uh, of a significant portion of the Democratic Party, if this question is still valid. It was valid uh, one and a half days ago, uh, but now it seems almost a foregone co conclusion that Kamala Harris has uh, enough uh, an enough number of delegates secured. Uh, and she has gotten, uh, over the course of the past two days, she, she has gotten uh, endorsements from the most, um, the most um, important politicians from, from the Democratic Party. Uh, I don't think she, of course it, it may change, but, but uh, I don't think she, uh, she's not, there's a question now of Kamala Harris uh, struggling to win a support of significant uh, faction. It, it, uh, uh, the situation evolved very quickly. Sure. Uh, two days ago, we were wondering whether Kamala Harris would yes. be able to secure yes, the nomination. Right. Now the situation is completely different. American politics is fascinating in this respect. Um, bringing us back to Poland and the influence of the, uh, the Polish diaspora in America, is, the, is the Polish voter, the Polish electorate in the United States of any significance uh, in terms of the uh, for the Republicans either, or for the Democrats, or are they just too small to count? Uh, I think that uh, that we, uh, of course, we are very we we have every right to be uh, so the Polish people have every, every right to be proud of uh, of the uh, of the Polish min minority in the United States and the Polish uh, Polonia, so called. Uh, but I think that. Uh, the Polish people have to be very cautious not to overestimate uh, the influence of, uh, of the Polish minority in the United States. Uh, now uh, there is more of a talk uh, about the, the, the Arab, uh, the Muslim minority, for example, in the, in the state of Michigan. Uh, but uh, there is no talk about the Polish mi that, that minority. That was a traditional Polish uh, area, wasn't it? The the Chicago and, and yes, Michigan. yes. Chicago is a is a solid. Uh, so the state of Illinois is a solid democratic state. So yes. yeah, that's, that's <sighs> the Polish minority is not capable of uh, you know, changing realistic, this, that yeah. situation in, in the state of Illinois. Um, we've got four months to go. I'm sure we'll have you back uh, on the, in, on more occasions as we lead up to the elections. Uh, so. Thank you very much. Thank you, Milan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that's all we have time for today. Uh, do join us again for how we got here. <laughs>